Maybe you can just be the video. I want to talk about photography, cameras, prints, megapixels, all that geeky stuff. And um, I don't want to talk about the cat, but he's in the way. But um, I will move him and then we'll get into the video. Why are you so cute? I have just been in the process of moving house. As you might be aware, if you've watched this channel before, you might notice a slightly different backdrop because that is because I've moved house. I'm now in a new studio. So with moving house, I have been moving around all my different photos and it got me thinking because I've got photos that are taken with a 24 megapixel camera and photos that are taken with Holly's old A7R2, which is about 44 megapixels, I believe. It got me thinking because these two photos are the exact same size. They are both A2, however, one was taken with 24 megapixels and one was taken with the Sony a7R 2 45 megapixels. If you were to just look at them like this, hung up on a wall, A2 size, you would never know which was taken on which camera. So granted they are two very completely different photos and to do this I should probably take the same photo with the same, with different cameras, sorry to try and make this a more fair test. But it just goes to show that megapixels doesn't really matter because there is a huge misconception when it comes to buying a new camera that more megapixels means a better camera. But that couldn't be any further from the truth because megapixel counts do have an impact on the image not in quality of the image, but in different ways. So for example, a camera with a lower megapixel count might perform better in low light. So that's why, for example, the Sony a7S III has 12 megapixels, but it is known for its incredible low light performance. However, a Sony a7R5 with 60 odd megapixels has a sharper image for photography, yes, and you can crop in further, but it might not perform as well in low light as the Sony a7S III because it has more megapixels trying to capture the light and it gets a little bit geeky there and I don't quite understand it, but more megapixels tend not to perform as well in low light as less megapixels. What more megapixels does give you is it gives you the ability to print larger, and I mean really big, and to crop in when you are editing. And that might be great if you are doing something like wildlife photography. Maybe you are shooting a little bird that's sat in a tree, a little robin, for example, and you get a nice shot of it, and you want to crop in to get a nice framed photo of that robin. If you shot that with a 12 megapixel sensor, you're not gonna be able to crop in as far as you are if you use something with a 60 megapixel sensor, for example. So that's where more megapixels become very, very useful when you are doing things like cropping. That's not to say that if you have a lower megapixel count, you can't get some really nice print sizes from say a 12 megapixel camera because you can. This one was shot on the Sony a7C, which is a 24 megapixel frame. Megapixel frame? What's a megapixel frame? It is a 24 megapixel sensor. I've got a full A2 size out of that. I could have probably gone even bigger if I really wanted to. And it just looks so sharp. It's shooting directly into the sun on Brighton Beach. And it looks great. This one, as I mentioned, is the same size but it was shot on the Sony a7R2 with 45 megapixels. So I think where this misconception comes in is, it's a bit of a marketing thing really, because rightly so, camera brands are wanting to sell more cameras. They have targets they want to achieve and all of that sales nonsense that I'm not interested in at all. But they need to make their money by selling cameras. So they fit more megapixels into a sensor and then promote the fact that it has got 60 megapixels or even like on the newer phones now you're getting 100 megapixel sensors. I think it's a Samsung S23 came out recently with a 100 megapixel sensor. And it's all marketing because that one 100 megapixel phone sensor is not going to take better pictures than a real dedicated camera sensor with a bigger sensor. And that is the other thing that goes into it as well is 
it's not all about megapixels, it could be the sensor size. So you've got crop sensor, full frame sensor, you've got medium format, large format, all of these different things go into creating a great image. It's not all about the megapixel count. Getting a great photo is all about creating the right light entering your sensor. So you've got aperture, you've got ISO, you've got shutter speed, you've got your sensor, you've got your sensor size. There's all of these different things that go into creating a great image and not just the megapixels. So next time you go out to buy a new camera, yes, take into account megapixels, but don't make don't think that is going to make a difference to how the photos look because you can get incredible photos with a 12 megapixel sensor and blow them up pretty large it's it, it depends what you want from a camera lower megapixels also tends to be better for video it just doesn't matter about the megapixel count it depends what you want from the camera that's all i'm trying to say but to prove this point i have two new photos that have just arrived in this tube and these were taken on the brand new lumix s5 II which is also a 24 megapixel sensor like my old Sony a7C and I'm going to be very very careful not to rip these I've not framed them yet this one is a shot of a bird I think it's a red kite and this was taken on the uh, Lumix S5 Mark II with the 50mm f1.8 shot at f1.8 and it is one of my favorite photos I've ever taken because it's just so sharp. It's not gonna come across on camera, but this is a fairly large print size. It's A2 and it is absolutely stunning. It looks incredible. I can't wait to get that framed and hung up on the wall. And I've got this shot too. And this was shot again on the Sony a7C. And this is of a cricketer, Jimmy Anderson. And I took this last year as he was playing for Lancashire, warming up for the England games. If you know anything about cricket, Jimmy Anderson is the most successful fast bowler ever and yeah he was playing for Lancashire so I went down took my camera and I managed to get this shot and I love it and I cannot wait again to get it framed and hug up on the wall and that was again shot on a 24 megapixel sensor and one final thing when it comes to megapixels is when you're viewing a print say you've got an A2 print size like these you're not always going to be viewing it right up close if you are you're not taking in the whole image when you stand back that again has an impact on the detail of the image because you are not going to see all of the little fine print nice and close up. You're viewing the image for what it is. You don't need that much detail. So when you view a picture from viewing distance, it looks great no matter what sensor size you use. I hope this makes sense. I think I probably waffled on around it in quite a long fashion, but um, yeah, sensor size doesn't matter. That's all I'm trying to say. Good to be back making a video. Been too long. It's been a busy, busy, busy month or so with moving house and work and everything. And if you want a tour of this new studio room, office, second bedroom conversion, let me know in the comments below. But um, yeah, it's good to be back making videos again. Let me know what cameras you use. Are you interested in megapixel count? Does it make a difference to you? I'll see you in the next video. Trying to adjust lights so you've got um got the cat is not that easy. You've been very needy, aren't you? Cute though. Ooh. Ah.